Hello and welcome to a bonus episode of Momentum Malum today. In this episode we'll cover a specific piece of legislation that requires the reduction of nitrogen use by 30% in agriculture, written by the federal government of Canada, i.e. the Trudeau government. The video that got me into this topic is by Clyde Do Something, and the video will be in the description below. This video will also be an alt tech exclusive for obvious reasons. I'm not a political channel by any stretch of the imagination. I'm a history and science based channel. This event is too recent to be history and involves realities beyond science, such as situations in morality, philosophy, and the like. So instead, I'll be showcasing why the policy we're talking about is a bad idea using science. Ah, science. Ruining the ambitions of central planners? Always. Let's get started. We must first talk about the Liberal government's main plan, the Canadian Net Zero Emissions Accountability Act. This requires the reduction of greenhouse gases by 40 to 45 percent by 2030, an impossible target, of course, but more on a key detail, reduce the amount of nitrogen specifically nitrous oxide emissions by 30%, by reducing the amount of nitrogen fertilizer also by 30% by 2030. Now I'm going to explain exactly why this is a bad idea by talking about common crops grown within Canada and their nitrogen requirement to produce a profitable crop. In Ontario, the average corn crop requires 130 pounds of nitrogen per acre of corn although it varies from field to field, and if you add wheat plus red clover into the mix, you need even less nitrogen. And in some fields where yield output is even higher, you need even more nitrogen. Work by Penn State University found that the expected grain yield in bushels per acre from 100 pounds of nitrogen is 100 pounds per acre of nitrogen for 100 bushels per acre of yield. You need 130 pounds of nitrogen per acre for 125 bushels per acre of corn, 160 pounds of nitrogen for 150 bushels of corn per acre, 190 pounds of nitrogen for 175 bushels, and 220 pounds of nitrogen for 200 bushels, and so on and so forth. I can reduce the amount of nitrogen you need to apply through the use of manure and for the use of previous cover crops and legume crops such as alfalfa as legume crops fix their own nitrogen pretty well but nitrogen is a key limiting factor for maximum yield to get an economic return for canola you need between 100 and 123 pounds per acre of nitrogen in the soil through applications or other means this by the way is for canada for areas of longer growing seasons, you might need even more. For wheat, without fungicides, you need 90 pounds of nitrogen per acre. If you want to get a lot of yield out of wheat in Ontario, however, you need between 120 pounds of nitrogen per acre and 150 pounds of nitrogen per acre. As for our common plants such as soybeans, these species can fix most of their nitrogen themselves and do not typically need added nitrogen into the soil but they also consume 100% of the nitrogen they produce, leaving a negligible amount of nitrogen in the soil. These are our major staple crops within Canada, and they all require high levels of nitrogen. Indeed, most grain crops in general require a lot of nitrogen to produce a good crop that can be utilized to make food, feed, and provide exports. A great deal of corn and soybeans is used for finishing cattle. The typical route that cattle take within Canada for meat production is that in the prairie provinces such as Alberta or Saskatchewan, the cattle are grass-fed until they reach the stage of their life where they begin putting on body fat. These cattle then get auctioned off to farmers in Ontario and other parts of Canada where they are placed into a grain-based diet. This speeds up the rate of which fat accumulates in their back and within their meat. This makes the meat a lot cheaper and makes it more readily available for regular people. The inexpensive nature of our food is directly related to the abundance of nitrogen 
we have thanks to the Haber-Bosch process. We can produce more meat and make it more available for a regular public thanks to the abundance of corn and soybean and wheat, which can be used to speed up certain cycles of, of the livestock production process and makes feed a lot easier and cheaper for other livestock animals. It also makes it more easier to get our hands on certain crops like wheat, which makes bread, cakes, and whatnot more readily available. Another interesting fact is that dried beans, despite being a legume crop, actually produce less than half of their own nitrogen, at least in Ontario. And as such, the crop requires an additional 40 to 80 pounds of nitrogen added to the soil to fertilize the crop. So TLDR, nitrogen is needed in heavy amounts to produce the amount of food we consume at the prices we enjoy. Tampering of this may wind up creating a situation where people who are just scraping by will have less to eat. It will make those on the gray line between the middle class and the poor dip back into poverty and make those in poverty even worse off. As such, right now, with our current technology, net zero benefits no one. This nitrogen policy especially benefits no one. There may come a day where we are able to produce our crops with far less fertilizer applications than we do right now. And either prior to this video being released or afterwards, there are some videos I've created that showcase some of the new tools that may help us reduce the amount of nitrogen we need to produce. But these are decades away. And that book covers everything. Thank you for watching.